Warning. This show is about the return of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. If you are easily offended by the truth, then you need to keep listening. His return is drawing near. Smokehousestudios.net The Front Porch Show A unique blend of current events and what they might mean. Humbly seen through the eyes of God's Word, the Bible, in an old school front porch discussion with occasional guests, your input, and a guiding hand through Christ. Broadcasting from atop the front porch, it's SmokehouseStudios.net's The Front Porch Show. Now, carefully blending more smoke goodness in each and every soundbite, your host, Smokehouse. Well, hello, good evening, good afternoon, good morning, friends, wherever you may be across the globe, across the United States. Joining you back once again on the Front Porch Show, SmokehouseStudios.net. I do not know the date. Chuck, what date is it? Do you know? <laughs> don't ask me. I, I'm usually about a week off. You don't even know either. <laughs> we don't even know what day it is. That's what happens when you work big, long days, like 14, 16 hour days. You just kind of lose track of the time. <laughs> well, yeah, and we missed you last week, Chuck. Oh, I missed being ben, here. Bennett knows the date. I think it's later than that, isn't it? It might be a little later than that. Oh, well. Hey, we dropped the ball, man. We, we don't know what day it is. We do know what's going on in the world, but we yeah. just don't know the date of the day. <laughs> yeah. We do know what's going on, but we do not know what day it is. But anyway, I can assure you that we are alive. Chuck, glad to have you back with us this weekend. Old yeah, bud. me too. It says March 24th, Bennett said. He's got okay. Phone. March 24th, 2018. Yep. Glad to have you, Chuck. Yeah, it's good to be here, man. I missed last week. I know. Where were you Where were you uh, congregating at? I was at my house cleaning, <laughs> <laughs> helping my wife get caught up on stuff. Oh, yeah? Well. But I've been, I've been working been working about 50 hours a week, roughly. Yeah. You know, I, I think what it is with all those days off that I had, mm-hmm. there was a lot of people that were wanting to pour concrete, so we were running, 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 trying to do it, and it was just... A lot of hours. Good stuff. Well, that's what I was telling our listeners, the fact that, uh, you know, all that rain we had a couple of weeks back that mm-hmm. you were able to, to come because you didn't have any work to do. And now the work has doubled, well, tripled on you. And so, yeah. you know, now. <laughs> and today was nice because because of the rain, I was able to be off today. So get some stuff done so I could actually be here tonight. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm glad you're here, man. Uh, I appreciate it. I needed your help last week, Chuck. <laughs> I had some technical difficulties, and I and I, I didn't have anyone here to fill the gap. There are advantages to having two different people yeah. on here. Yeah, there, there really <laughs> especially is. Especially for that reason, technical wise, especially. Yeah, really is. And I'm glad you're here now. Friends, tonight's title of the show is titled Tick Tock. And we're going to get into why we titled it Tick Tock in just a little bit. Well, first, we'd like to welcome. All listeners to iHeartRadio, TuneIn Radio, and the Christian Truckers Network. Mm -hmm. Also on iHeartRadio and Spreaker Radio. Tonight's title is called TikTok. Friends, okay, do not get discouraged um, about Trump signing this spending bill yesterday, okay? Because I'm going to tell you something, and Chuck... You saw my post on Facebook. I was the first one to lose my mind over it. Yeah, I was really surprised myself. I'm going, oh, my gosh. Well, what and what on well, earth did he just do? Well, I mean, seriously, what did you think when he came out and he was saying, oh, this is the most horrible thing that we have ever, ever done. And, and, and uh, I've got to sign it, though, because we've got to fund our military. But this is terrible. This is a horrible bill. But I'm going to go ahead and put my name on it. You know, and I'm sitting here thinking, what? I had two different thoughts. My main thought was, oh, man. Like, I mean, he's done some some minor things that, you know, a couple of small things, you know, or it's, like I said, somewhat minor things that I didn't agree with. I'm going, ugh. And then a couple other things I was kind of like, ugh. But overall, like, I really approve of what he's doing. And I know that he's, you know, there's a lot that you can't get done or is very difficult to get done because of the other side Mm -hmm. and them, you know, resisting everything you're doing anyway. They don't even want you to, they don't even want them to get anything done 
It's really about them winning. It's not even about us, the American people, winning because, I mean, you saw that when he, um, what was it there? My brain's going to go blank. When he was there uh, presenting the information, like talking about, like highlighting these different people who had been through so much. Mm -hmm. And then the Democrats were just sitting there, you know, not even yeah. just like frowning. And Oh, that was the uh, State of the Union address. I was going to say, yeah, I, th I thought it was the State of the Union. I couldn't remember exactly which one. When he was crediting the military. Which, which and, event it was, right. And they just sat there like bumps on the log. Like they that's get, what happens when you get old. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My brain works about half the time. But that's what they were doing, just sitting there proving to themselves they are not about family. They're not about the American people. And when he came out and say and stated those things about the the bill, you know, I, I was like, where is this coming from? Yeah, especially the whole, you know, funding of Planned Parenthood. And I was like, oh, my gosh, you know, the whole border wall and then doing just fence for so many miles instead of an actual, you know, a wall, you would think, you know. More right. Of a, well, um, what, what he campaigned fortified on. Wall. Yeah. And, and basically my rant on Facebook was – Everything that he campaigned on, he was not funding. Yeah. And then everything that he was campaigning against, he was funding. Mm -hmm. Okay. The Johnson Amendment, where the church would not be held the accountable under the 501c3 if they spoke out about politics, <laughs> right. right? Yeah. Okay. And Trump, how many times has he assured us that you, we're going to maintain religious freedom? Yeah. You're going to be able to speak what you want to speak. Okay. And... On and on it goes. Mm -hmm. And then to to see the fact that this is not being addressed in this spending bill, but everything that he was campaigning against is, okay, I, I went off. I had two different thoughts. My my Like I said, my main thought was like, oh, man, this is going to cost him the presidency getting reelected because so many people are angry at him. Laura, yeah. Laura Ingram and all these different people who really follow him and, yeah. you know, very conservative, they were really upset. Like, everybody that I listened to was just really upset, and I was going, oh, my gosh, what is he doing? Yeah. And then <laughs> and then part of me in the back of my mind, I'm thinking, you know, he's always got something going on, so I'm thinking— A strategy, I yeah. can't imagine him giving up this much because he's, you know, he's a pretty decent— no, I say decent. He's he's a really good, you know, negotiator right. on a lot of stuff, you know. So I was thinking, man, there's just no way he – how could he do this? So Wait. many different things and not get some of them that he wanted and just like he just gave up. I'm thinking he always talked about Obama, you know, like he was such a horrible negotiator and he gave everybody else everything they wanted. We didn't get anything. I'm going, man, he just like did an Obama here. Uh, yeah, yeah I mean, so, face <laughs> Right, Obama, I'm going, you know? oh, my gosh. So, but then part of me in the back of my mind thinking, you know what? What if he's doing something else that just people aren't seeing? And I won't ruin it, but I was kind of happy to find out some of the stuff that we found out today. So Right. Well, friends, we have found out some breaking information that has just come out across the wire just hours ago uh, in, in regards to spending bill. And we're going to get to that, okay? I want everybody to feel the pews because this is important information, and we need to go over it slowly you won't be disappointed right and, and we're going to lead into it because we we, we we're, we're building this show around what is falling to the earth next week because i think that has a a a huge spiritual ramification of, of where we're going so i'd like to open the show with psalms 37 and and friends i think we need to listen to the words of david here as he speaks these terms, because I, I believe God wants us to know these things right now. I, I truly believe that, that God is setting this in motion, and these are the words that we need to hear. Psalms 37, do not fret because of evil men or be envious of those who do wrong. For like the grass, they will soon wither. Like green plants, they will soon die away. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land. Now listen. You are to dwell in the land and enjoy safe pastures. One thing I like to bring up. When the children of Israel went into captivity for 70 years, and listen close, friends, because this ties in. When the children of Israel went into captivity in Babylon, they were told, by God, when you get there, just be fruitful and multiply and occupy while you are there. Basically, what, what God was telling them to do was to dwell 
in the land and enjoy safe pastures. Okay? So we, likewise, we're in captivity, friends. We, we cannot deny that. If we deny that, then, then we're totally wrong here, okay? <laughs> right. uh, we do not live in the land of the free. We do not live in the land of freedom. I mean, when you've got to pay a license to go put your boat in the water, and then you got to pay a license to catch a fish that's in the water, okay? You don't even own your house. You know, those that are paying mortgages, okay? You, even though your mortgage, you may pay your house off, guess what? Now you've got to pay property taxes, okay? And if you don't pay the property taxes, even though you own that house, the government comes and takes your home. That's right. And then you got eminent domain where they, if they yeah. decide they want your house, they can just come in and take it. Exactly. There's a lot of our, our freedoms are being eroded and are, have, and are, have been eroded. So Right. And we are, you don't even own your car. I mean, when you buy a car, you have to get a loan from the bank and the bank is the one or the lien holder is the one, whoever the lien holder may be, whether it be the bank, whether it be a finance company, they hold they hold that, that title to that car. You don't even own that car. And if you cannot make the payments to the bank, they come and they take your car. Then once your car is paid off, well, you still have to pay road tax. You have to pay your tags in order to drive on the roads. Registration. And registration. Mm -hmm. If you don't pay that, guess what? You don't drive your car. So we don't own anything. The bankers are the ones that control this whole situation. Mm -hmm. We are just like the children of Israel when they were in captivity in Babylon. We are being held captive in this land of freedom by the banksters, by the big corporations. We are we're prisoners in our own land, friends. Sell your car and buy a horse. There you go. <laughs> Saddle up your horses. <laughs> yeah. So with all that being said, with all that being said, God tells us to dwell in the land and enjoy safe pastures. And then verse 3 says, trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land. Oh, I'm sorry. Verse 4. I just read that. <laughs> Delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust in him, and he will do this. He will make your righteousness shine like the dawn. Listen to me, friends. Mm. If we follow these commitments, these commandments that were given to us by God, he has told us that he will make our righteousness shine like the dawn, the justice of your cause like the noonday sun. Mm -hmm. Now, we're fighting a cause here. That's right. And our cause is to help ex expose the, the wickedness in the land, but yet at the same time, bring others to Christ. Mm -hmm. And this is a just cause, friends. We have to stay the course. We have to stay in agreement with God. We have to follow his commandments. And we have to occupy while we are in the land of Babylon in bondage. Okay. Because I'm going somewhere with this. This is going to be a, an excellent show. Mm -hmm. Verse 7, be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. Do not fret when men succeed in their ways, when they carry out their wicked schemes. How many times have we gotten frustrated? How many times have we been saying, lock her up? How many times have we been saying these things and nothing happens, right? That's right. And then, then yesterday, Trump comes out and tells us how terrible this bill is, and him being this big-time banker accountant saying, uh, this is a terrible deal, it's a terrible deal, but I'm still going to sign it. <laughs> and you're like, what? Totally out of character? What's what going on? What is he on? doing? What's he doing? <laughs> and I got angry. Mm -hmm. I got angry because I was not still before the Lord. I did not wait patiently for him. I did fret when men succeeded in their ways, when they carried out their wicked deeds. Yesterday, and I repent for it after we share the, the information coming probably in the next hour. But friends, God tells us to refrain from anger and turn from wrath. Do not fret. It leads only to evil, for evil men will be cut off. But those who hope in the Lord will inherit 
the land. Mm -hmm. Those who hope in the Lord will inherit the land. Now, what happened after the children of Israel escaped from their captivity of Babylon? Mm -hmm. They did what? They inherited their land. Mm -hmm. This is all connected, friends. I'm telling you, it's going to blow your mind. Well, you and I were talking, too, about, um, like, my, me personally with my job, you know, I was really considering changing companies because of, you know. Yeah, money. <laughs> yeah, exactly that. And, no work, you know, money. <laughs> yeah, I I mean, I kind of wanted to be off Saturday, too, you know, just so I can spend more time with my family and just kind of, you know, have time to help my wife get caught up from the week of all the stuff she's trying to do around the house, having five kids. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know. I've kind of just accepted the fact that, you know, Saturdays are just not going to happen right now. I, you know, I work for a really good company and, um, you know, there's some pretty good guys there. Um, you know, and it makes a big difference when you, you know, enjoy the people you work with. Um, there's never a dull moment there. <laughs> We're all a bunch of characters. Oh yeah. <laughs> um, but, um, you know, I mean that the, in a good way. Um, but, um, you know, I w- it's kind of cool because I was, you know, I was like, ah, oh, you know, it's been kind of rough. You know, making what I'm making, I'm making all right. But when you have five kids too, you know, it costs a little more to live. Oh, yeah. But it was kind of cool because I was just kind of praying about it. And then God just kind of, you know, opened the door for me to get a little raise, uh, you know. And um, it was interesting because I got my paycheck and it it, it was $777 and something cents. But Three I, just, I just thought that was cool. I'm like, you know, it could have been 776, it could have yeah. been 778. But the fact that it was $777, and we know that God is in the details. Yeah. So I, I was just really encouraged by that. Like, God's like, you know, this is where I want you at, you know, and I'm going to just put that 777 just to kind of confirm to you that I'm going to take care of you. You know, it's it's Amen. a complete thing. So I'm like, all Amen. right, you know, it's not always about money. Uh-huh. You know, that's important to consider that stuff. But at the same time, you can't let that be determined where you go. Amen. So. And with that being said, you know, God is showing a lot of signs this week we're going to get into. And just like you having the triple sevens on your paycheck, mm-hmm. here we have now something that's going to be falling to the earth. We're going to get to later. It's going to sum all this up, friends. Mm-hmm. God is speaking. We need to listen. But God says in verse 10, a little while and the wicked will be no more. Though you look for them, they will not be found. But the meek will inherit the land and enjoy the great peace. The wicked plot against the righteous. Listen, listen to me, friends. Listen to me very close. The wicked plot against the righteous and gnash their teeth at them. But the Lord laughs at the wicked, for he knows their day is coming. So when we see Nancy Pelosi up there and Chuck Schumer and all of them, the deep state out there, running their little strategies. God is laughing. Have we forgot that? That's right. I mean, look how quick we have forgotten 9-11. I mean, have we forgotten that God laughs at their schemes? I but, think I think especially, you know, laughing because they think they're so great and so powerful and so mm-hmm. deceptive that nobody is going to discover them. That's right. part of their, you know, their laughter. Right. That they're getting away with stuff and well, that they, there's like a feeling of invincibility because— they're getting away with so much stuff in the darkness. And, yeah, and God just kind of laughs like, <laughs> "I'm fixing oh, to turn no, loud. <laughs> you're not getting away with that. You meet th- you right now in the moment. You people don't know what's going on, but you, you, you forget, or you yeah. know, you, they don't know that there's a God who's paying attention and He sees everything, even if other people don't see it. Mm-hmm. So that I can see why He would say, you know, He's laughing like, yeah, mm-hmm. you're you're not as 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 crafty and as as you know as good at hiding stuff as you think you are because I see everything. So, well, God now in Psalms 37, He's going to tell us what the wicked are doing at present, and then by what this omnibus bill that was signed may be bringing listen Mm. very close he says the wicked draw the sword and they bend the bow meaning the the deep state and those corrupt they have drawn their sword on us to slay us they have they have bent their bows to pierce our hearts, friends, to pierce the spirit of America. They have, they have drawn their weapons to bring us to our knees. But God says, the wicked draw the sword and bend the bow to bring down the poor and needy, to slay those 
whose ways are upright. This is very powerful, friends. God is speaking to us tonight. But their swords will pierce their own hearts. Listen, their swords will pierce their own hearts and their bows will be broken. Mm. Better the little that the righteous have than the wealth of many wicked. Sorry. Friends, if you are living right now, paycheck to paycheck, if you're struggling, if you're, if, you're, if you're looking out and you're seeing all of these corrupt making billions and billions and billions of dollars, it says that better the little that the righteous have than the wealth of many wicked. Mm-hmm. Hold on to that because he says, for the power of the wicked will be broken. He did not say that the power of the wicked might be broken. God is not all all politically correct, say, well, you know, I'll consider it. No. He says <coughs> that the power of the wicked will be broken, but the Lord upholds his righteousness. Mm. Now, we're going to stop right there because we're going to carry you through the rest of Psalms 37 as we go throughout the show because as we, as we climb through the events this week, this is going to, to play a role as we go on through Psalms 37. So we're going to stop you right there. And as we were talking about, Trump did some very strange wording in his speech. Now, notice, let me take you back to Psalms 37 here just real quick. The part that says that, uh, but their swords will pierce their own hearts and their bows will be broken. Where it says the wicked will draw their swords and... Um, uh, and bend the bow to bring down the poor and the needy to slay those who are upright, but their swords will pierce their own hearts. And, and he goes on to say that, that, that we're going to look, we're going to be looking for the wicked and they won't be found anymore. Hmm. Interestingly enough, with that being said, when Trump came out in his State of the Union address, he made a statement very promptly. He's like, you know, I, I kind of made this decision Right before I came out here, I, I signed a deal to keep Guantanamo Bay open. And, For, foreshadow. And that's when <laughs> we saw all the Democrats after that just sit on their, their dumps and, and not say a word, okay? <laughs> God said that we will look for the wicked and they will not be found. Trump said he's going to keep Guantanamo Bay open. So all you Trump supporters out there, just like me yesterday, that was fit to be tied over this omnibus bill being signed by Trump and him stating that it was a ridiculous bill, shouldn't have even been signed, but I'm going to sign it anyway. (laughs) You hang tight because let's go over the latest weather patterns that we have been seeing and then. We're going to lead into everything that's going on. Now, friends, California, we have told you about the wildfires that they had many months ago that left the land parched. And if they ever get any type of bad storms, that it is going to just have landslide after landslide. The signs are still coming. There is a judgment coming. God is warning us. Listen to what's going on in California right now. Tonight, as rivers and creeks flood across California, life and death rescues are underway. And this person is trapped. A powerful two-day deluge dumping up to an inch of rain an hour. In the saturated, muddy, and unstable hills across Southern California, there are now new evacuations. Mother nature is not being kind. From San Francisco to Sacramento, streets are underwater, neighborhoods are impassable. Rain records have been washed away in parts of Los Angeles and Santa Barbara counties. Roads are treacherous. A small plane even skidded off a runway. A powerful atmospheric river is sweeping in from the sea, funneling in a season's worth of rain in just days. Are you ready to leave if you have to? Yes, actually we are. Mark Vance is losing ground as mud flows in. We're a little, little scared that something big's going to come down. Tonight, another blast of dangerous weather and rain is blowing in. Threat of more mudslides and flooding comes as rescues play out across the state. 
After two days of heavy rain, it is winding down in California tonight, but the threat of mudslides still has about 30,000 people under evacuation orders. Maria Villarreal is back again in Montecito. Maria. Jeff, we are standing in one of the hardest hit neighborhoods. Behind me, you can see the creek is moving fast. The rain is coming down hard. These are dangerous conditions right now. Just a few minutes ago, we actually heard boulders coming downstream. It is an eerie reminder of just how quickly these storms can turn, creating devastating situations in a matter of minutes. For nearly 48 hours, a massive storm has been beating down on parts of California. The rain is wreaking havoc on roadways across the state. In downtown Los Angeles, 13 people were injured when two buses collided on a rain-slicked freeway. This road began to collapse when a hillside gave way. Farther north, fire crews rescued stranded motorists caught by fast-moving floodwaters. Thank God nobody was hurt. The saturated ground caused this 70-year-old pine tree to fall across a street into another property. But the storm also supplied some much-needed powder in the Sierra Mountains. With more than five feet of snow in the last 24 hours, Mammoth Mountain employees tried to shovel out the lifts. The biggest cause for concern is still in Montecito, a town that's just starting to rebuild after January's deadly mudslide. When a grub is riding out the storm in her house, well, you know that there's something happening up there, and you just don't know what it is. So, friends, the state of California is washing off into the ocean due to no vegetation being there to, to stop these mudslides. Keep that in mind on the West Coast. Now, mm -hmm. friends, we told you that, uh, and, and you've known, that that nor'easter has hit for the fourth time over in New England, and it's looking like they could be hit with a fifth one. Wow. I do believe. So, friends, we've got the seas and the waves roaring on the West Coast. We've got the seas and the waves roaring on the East Coast. Uh, this is the latest info that has come from the Nor'easter. We want to go from southeastern Massachusetts now to the Cape, where the wind is expected to kick up tonight as well. And WBZ's Bill Shields continues our team coverage. He's live tonight in Sandwich. Bill. Dave, you know, this is the fourth Nor'easter now this month. And every winter we experience erosion, but this is, I wouldn't say unprecedented, but it is very unusual. And the ero erosion has been horrible. Let me give you an example. He said it's not unprecedented, but it is unusual. He's fixing to tell you about the erosion. I want you to listen close. Uh, the four nor'easters in a row, listen to the details on the erosion. We're in sandwich right now. Behind me, you see those steps? Three weeks ago, there was a home there that had been there for as long as I've been around. So that's the extent of the erosion here and in Nauset Beach. The ocean is relentless, and every winter, it reminds us. But the last two weeks, furious. Here at Nauset Beach, locals have watched daily as nor'easters reshape the shoreline. We have 100 feet since January 1st off of this Nosset Beach. It's incredible. For half a century, Liam's Clam Shack served beachgoers in the summer. The ocean took away the protective dunes two weeks ago, and heavy equipment took away the structure yesterday. At some level, we expect to see erosion at the beach, uh, you know, annually, but this is definitely uh, an anomaly this season. You know, with, with I would be conservative to say over 60 feet of coastal dune that we've lost here at the public beach. This footing, this foundation, that's all that's left of Liam's clam shack that was here for 40 years. Before a couple of weeks ago, Liam's ended about here. And then there was a 50 or 60 foot boardwalk out to the beach. The beach is now right here. The top picture shows nearly 100 yards of dunes between the beach and Liam's years ago. Bottom picture? Now, did you notice that? He said 40 years. <laughs> yeah. A lot of 40s in that. 40 is an important number in the, in the Bible, just like your 777 on your paycheck. Mm -hmm. A lot of things are happening, friends. God tells us, refrain from anger and turn from wrath. Do not fret, because it leads only to evil. For evil men will be cut off, but those who hope in the Lord will inherit the land a little while and the wicked will be no more and though you look for them 
they will not be found, but the meek will inherit the land and enjoy the great peace. That's right. Friends, God is sending us a message. The things that we're about to go over here in a little bit are going to blow your mind. The things that are happening and increasing with frequency, there is a judgment coming, friends, yep. and it all ties into what Trump said yesterday. Yep. Okay, we got prayer requests, Chuck. When we come back, I just wanted everybody to fill the pews so uh, we can get as many people as we can praying. Nice. Uh, and we'll go over those uh, when we get back. So. Glad to have you, Chuck. Yeah, glad to be here, man. Because I need your help, <laughs> Chuck. I need your, and you know what's coming next. <laughs> That's <man>. right. <laughs> We're going to have to help out uh, Alex Jones, help him That's spread right. the word as well. That's so. right. Friends, don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Right after this. Smokehouse. To talk to Smokehouse, dial 641-552-9354. That number once again, 641 641- Five five two nine three five four, and enter access code two five two three eight zero, followed by the pound sign. Call in and join the show. Smokehousestudios.net. God is among us. The door to the ark is slamming shut. I just have to say something, man. It seems like every time I turn on your broadcast, you're bragging. It just gets old, man. I'm going to shut you down right now, okay? We're taking calls about your nomination. Do you understand they're having congressional hearings trying to shut us down? Do you understand I'm ringing the alarm? If that was happening to anybody else, I'd be freaked out. I mean, what's it going to take? Us being shut down? Is that what you want, Frank? You know what, Alex? Hey, I put him on pause again. Hey, Frank, do you understand it's not bragging to say we are the tip of the spear, we're under attack, we need your help? As much begging as I do, we can barely pay the bills and grow in the face of this. I'm not going to just stop growth and let them start pushing us backwards. You understand? I need your help, Frank. I need your help, Frank. Go to InfoWarsStore.com right now and help fund the InfoWars. Do you understand? I need your help, Frank. Free Press needs your help, Frank. They use their media to assassinate real news. They use their schools to teach children that their president is another Hitler. They use their movie stars and singers and comedy shows and award shows to repeat their narrative over and over again. And then they use their ex-president to endorse the resistance. All to make them march, make them protest, make them scream racism and sexism and xenophobia and homophobia, to smash windows, burn cars, shut down interstates and airports, bully and terrorize the law-abiding. Until the only option left is for the police to do their jobs and stop the madness. And when that happens, they'll use it as an excuse for their outrage. The only way we stop this, the only way we save our country and our freedom is to fight this violence of lies with the clenched fist of truth. I'm the National Rifle Association of America, and I'm freedom's safest place. Okay, now with all of these things happening, uh, weather-wise, earthquakes, we're going to get into some uh, fissures that are opened up even over in Kenya. The media is really pushing the narrative of climate change. I don't know if you've been paying attention to. Uh, I don't know if you've been paying attention to. Uh, hello, Cheryl. Thank you for tuning in, girl. <laughs> I don't know if you were paying attention to the media this week, but it's all about climate change, climate change, climate change, climate change. The climate is changing. Mm-hmm. God told us that it would. Matthew twenty-four. I mean, Luke and Mark. Mark. We know the climate's going to change, and it is changing, but it's not due at the hand of man, and they want to make money off the carbon footprint. That was the whole purpose in that, and Trump got us out of that, so the media now is using, hey, look, we told you the climate was changing, and and we can fix it if you pay us your tax money. <laughs> but see, Trump took you out of that, so look at what Trump's doing. You know, the, the Russian narrative is dying out. All of these uh, corrupt politicians and FBI agents, McCabe and the rest of them, they're being uncovered. So the media really has nothing left to beat Trump about except this climate change. Now, interestingly enough, I'm going to cover an article, but listen to the media this week. 
Earlier this year, amid the threat of nuclear North Korea and more, a scientist sounding alarm over climate change, the Bulletin of Atomic Scientists ticked their symbolic doomsday clock ahead. Only two minutes to midnight, people, planning some of the blame on President Trump. I don't know if uh, most of many people would agree with that's what the cause of it, but there's a lot going on out there in the world no matter what. Perhaps it sparked a recent story in the Washington Examiner that claimed that more and more there are Washington officials, especially those who work in the intelligence agencies, that are flocking to these doomsday camps and partnerships in them, places called the Fortitude Ranch and others. That one is near D.C., and it helps people prepare for pending doom. Here now, Dr. Drew Miller. I was going to say Dr. Doom, but you're not. You're Dr. Drew Miller, CEO of Fortitude Ranch and a retired Air Force colonel. Uh, doctor, good to have you here um, tonight. So tell, what is Fortitude Ranch? How does it work? Okay, now before he speaks, I want you to keep in your mind all the signs that God told us to be watching for and where God told us in his word that, that men will seek to hide themselves <laughs> up under the, in the caves and in the rocks, okay? This is going to be what is one thing that's going to take place in the last days. Wow. They're going to hide themselves in caves and rocks, okay? Listen close. Sure. Fortitude Ranch is a recreational and survival community, so in good times we're a great place to go to vacation and hunt, but in bad times we're a survival retreat, a place where you can go to survive a pandemic or a long-term electrical outage or some other disaster that leads to a collapse in economic activity and loss of law and order. Okay. So he said that they, they, these places are designed, and you go to them in the event of a pandemic or an electrical grid outage, an EMP or so. Why are they bringing that up? Let's listen more. <laughs> you are, you're genuinely concerned that this is something that we all need to be prepared for. We absolutely do. Government is not prepared to handle a pandemic. Government officials will be protected. We're not that far from Mount Weather where government officials will go. Uh, wealthy people can go to places like Survival Condo if you have millions of dollars. Uh, but most of us will be on our own uh, with the loss of law and order from a pandemic or loss of the electrical system. Police won't be able to protect you in your neighborhoods. Okay, that's twice he said that. In the event of a pandemic or an electrical outage. Mm -hmm. That's twice now he said right. that. All right, let's listen. There's going to be gangs and people that out there great. marauding for food. And so you need to be able to protect yourself. <laughs> what a horrible. It's hor horrible to imagine. Uh, but you, these are growing. How many Fortitude Ranches are there around the country? I know you don't say exactly where they are, but they're mostly in the middle of, of nowhere, mm -hmm. right? Uh, well, we locate in remote areas. We're in West Virginia, west of D.C., and we're also in Colorado, and we're raising funds now to expand across the U.S. Okay, so they're right outside of D.C., and they're out in Colorado, out around the Denver airport. Okay, I'm getting some more of this. Y'all hang on. <laughs> and how, you know, how would you characterize interest in them? Has it exploded over recent years? It's been high and it keeps getting higher. The North Korean threat is bad. For example, former CIA director uh, James Wolsey warned last year that just one North Korean nuclear weapon that's optimized for electromagnetic pulse exploding over the United States could take down our electric system, not for weeks or months, but for over a year. A Scottish court has just delivered okay, a very... So, now, article comes out this week. What do they know that we don't? D.C. officials are flocking to doomsday camps. Washington, D.C. government officials are flocking to doomsday camps around the country. Now, it says here that according to the Washington Examiner, a building network of backwoods doomsday camps around the country are pulling in members from affluent areas, even Washington, national security officials, as the threats grow. Mm. From nuclear war or an EMP, electromagnetic pulse, or a virus attack. Dubbed Fortitude Ranches, which she just talked about, the outpost promises protection and a year's supply of food for those unable to build their own bunker. Hmm. With preparations for a shift scenario, what more until a crisis strikes, the doomsday camps are being used for prepper training and vacations. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's interesting because I think of like um, I, I saw a documentary about this or a news piece on it a couple of years back about these um, kind of like in ground like miss, old missile silos, like them building like these 
luxury apartments in the ground. And um, it's, I remember thinking, wow, that's, that's kind of interesting. And, um, but like you said, you know, why are they doing this? Like, you know, it's not, I mean, there's like things come and go and things get popular. It's like, oh, this is kind of trendy or this is kind of a new, cool new thing to do. But like, like he was saying, he kept saying EMP attack and he kept repeating those things over and over again. And it makes me think of like, you know, the Bible says those, those who have eyes to see and ears to hear, let them hear what the spirit says. And you got to remember, it's just truth. Like people who are paying attention to what's going on, you know, the gift of revelation is not just like spiritual knowledge of stuff, but it's also physical, like knowledge of things that are coming. And if, so if you really start paying attention, that's what the devil keeps you trying, you know, to not do. He gets you distracted on all these things. Um, it's easy to not see the things coming that are coming on the earth. Cause if you really believe what God said and you believe that he's coming back, you don't stop looking for these things, the the things that are going on. So, right, exactly. And I was talking to uh, Sister Sherry right before the show, and she was talking about how just here lately, people have just been going nuts on her for for her belief and for her teachings and and for her walks in life, trying to warn people. On mm-hmm. her end, people are just freaking out now, and I mean, re- physically attacking them, not not physically, but v- at least verbally, you mm-hmm. know. And have you noticed that, like an increase in people kind of just well, acting weird? I have. I have. And the thing is, see, we all, like, I think humans kind of, like, and a lot of psychologists, you know, the good ones will agree that, you know, we kind of all create a bubble of kind of what we're used to and what we know. And when people start saying stuff that makes us feel uncomfortable and kind of gets us out of that bubble, it's... You can imagine, especially if you're kind of really building your life around this whole secure idea that the world's basically good, that our government officials, you know, at the highest levels and different levels really want what's best for us, then that really bothers you when you hear stuff that, oh, there's this, you know, secret group of people trying to overthrow the government. And, right. You know, they, they don't want to hear that. And it's – I just look at it like if you really want to know the truth, you're willing to accept whatever the truth is. No matter how bad it is, mm-hmm. even it's uncomfortable. It's like, oh man, I'm kind of like a person. I really, I like to watch very dramatic films because I can just kind of take it in and filter it out, and you know, find, you know, I love my wife, but she does not like dramatic films. She's like, I've got enough stress, so I don't want to, you know. <laughs> which, which I, I respect that. I'm not saying it in a negative way, but um, you know, I, I really like to know what's going on. I'd rather know if the whole Earth is about to explode. I'd rather know what it is so I don't understand people that they would rather think about other things to bury their head in the sand. Like to me, it's kind of exciting, even if it's even if it's like a terrifying event. I think a lot of that too also is the fact that, you know, being a Christian, we know God's in control. It, it does freak you go. out. You know, that's, when you, that's what I was wanting you to say. Yeah, when you right when there. you suffer, you know, the idea of suffering and being in pain obviously freaks anybody out like including myself i don't want to sit there with half of my body laying and just sit there you know not dying and just sitting there in pain you know that whole idea you know is kind of freaky just because mm-hmm. the pain and suffering but you know i think too like just since i was like 20 my teens 20 and then early 30s and i'm being 40 now it's interesting how my view on things have changed like so much from oh i don't want to say something and cause problems or i don't want you know what if i get shot and I really feel like God is kind of moving my heart to more care about just saying the truth. And if somebody shoots me or does something, you know, it's better to speak the truth right. than to set there quiet trying to protect your life. And I think about the scripture, you know, it says, you know, he who tries to save his life will lose it, but he who loses a life for my sake will, you know, gain, gain. it. Yeah. And, it, and you think about that and you're thinking, wow, you know, when you when God kind of starts moving your heart that direction, it's amazing how your focus comes from you know, self-preservation, it shifts from self-preservation to, you know what, I just want to speak the truth because it's like this movement in your heart that just wants to speak the truth. You'd rather live in truth than live in peace with everything just going smoothly because it's not about you and your comfort. It's about speaking the truth because that's what's going to benefit people. And that's what the point I was getting at with Sister Sherry is God is, is he's really moving right now because of the division of people kind of going nuts on you for 
you know, believing the way you do and trying to tell people, look, this is not global warming. This is God. Mm-hmm. And then just like you said, you, you said you feel God is, is moving on you. And there is this spiritual movement that's happening. This is what we're going to get into. In Psalms 37, we're going to go back to it, to the middle part of it, where it says the days of the blameless are known to the Lord. And their inheritance will endure forever. In times of disaster, they will not wither. In days of famine, they will enjoy plenty. Friends, our media right now is warning us of either some sort of uh, pestilence or some sort of electrical grid outlet. This may be their their Hail Mary after what Trump has done um, that we're going to get to. I'm going to leave it a cliffhanger. <laughs> but But God knows this. But God warns us. After he tells us that as long as he'll take care of us in times of disaster, okay? So these these threats from the media of disaster coming, these doomsday caves that the elite are going in is going to be their graves. Let them go. Let them go. Because here's what God says. But the wicked will perish. The Lord's enemy will be like the beauty of the fields. They will vanish, vanish like smoke. The wicked borrow and do not repay. Does that not sound like the uh, elite in our world today? And then he says, but, they're righteous, but the righteous give generously, which we do. Those the Lord blesses will inherit the land, but those he curses will be cut off. Now, if the Lord delights in a man's way, he makes his steps firm. Through, though he stumbles, he will not fall, for the Lord upholds him with his hand. It goes on to say, I was young and now I'm old, yet I've never seen the righteous forsaken or the children begging bread. Mm. They're always generous to lend freely. Their children will be blessed. Friends, David said it. He has never seen the righteous forsaken or their children begging bread. God has warned us in here that the wicked are going to meet their doom. Mm -hmm. And they are going into their rocks and caves right now. That's interesting, that scripture. I never, you know, when you just said that, I put the two like, whoa. Yeah. That's what it's talking about. You know, the cave, you know, crawling up under the rocks, you know, Mm -hmm. hoping the rocks will fall on them to protect them from the judgment coming on the earth. I'm like, wow, that's interesting. Exactly. And I think this is a huge sign for the fact that they're going to their doomsday caves. Yeah. That, that. Not, not, not just this weather pattern, friends. This, let me, let me, let me separate this for you. What I'm trying to say is, and God tells us that what He is doing spiritually, He will allow to happen in the physical first, where we can see it, and then He brings the spiritual aspect of that after. And what we are seeing now is God getting ready to do something spiritually. And we're seeing the manifestation of it right now in the physical. This is why we've got to pay attention, yep. not only to the weather patterns, but they're going into their rocks and their caves. And now I want you to listen to this. No, I don't want to get. I don't want. I don't want to go there yet. <laughs> I don't. I won't save that till when we talk about Trump. Here, listen to what's going on in Kenya. More Earth changes. Is God showing us that something is about to be split apart? Listen. Just have described the cracks that are appearing along the earth on the Maimahi Suswa area as a result of fault lines or seismic or volcanic activities. And one day in the next 50 million years, there will be the Nubian Africa and the Somali Africa according to the tectonic plates. What she's talking about, friends, there has been a fissure, a crack that has split across the land of Kenya, separating the land. Listen here. However, according to the seismologist, a branch of geophysics, they have a different view. That structure we have, which I call a fissure, is, has nothing to do with the folding activities. Because as we speak right now, what has happened there is that if you went just 200 meters to the south of that, you will find so many fractures and fissures similar to the one that has occurred around the road. And the reason why that has occurred is that during the construction of the road, 
when there is the directing of the water and the culverting process, the water collects and comes around that area. And because that builds an overburden on already an area which has underground streams, which leads to the collapse. And that is the reason why that has happened at that point. So we have the land in Kenya cracking open. Now, they're, they're trying to say it's due to water flow. Could be. I don't know. But, friends, that is what is going on. This is what the Lord is allowing us to see, along with the nor'easters and the mudslides. Check out what happened this week in Greece. Huge amounts of Saharan dust have engulfed Greece, making it look more like Mars than a part of the Mediterranean. In Athens, people gawped at the dust-streaked Acropolis. Many residents have been wearing masks to protect themselves. Africa is just a few hundred kilometers south of the island of Crete, and with current strong southerly winds, the dust easily crossed the Mediterranean Sea. The skies around the eastern port of Agios Nokolaios turned from blue to a vivid orange. Weather reports suggest more thick Saharan dust will arrive on Sunday. By then, some of it will have traveled up to Israel, Lebanon, Jordan, and Syria. So, as we can say, more events are happening. Now, along with that, friends, God is also telling us that the because there is no truth in Hosea 4, because there is no truth, because there is no mercy, there's no knowledge of God in the land, there's cursing, lying, stealing, the committing of adultery, and blood touches blood, and all of that. He's going to take the beast from the land, the birds from the air, and the fish from the seas are dying. He's warning us. He's telling us that, that we are not acknowledging God. And listen to what happened this week in Australia. So it was reported to us this morning that there was uh, over 100 whales that had washed up on the beach. Uh, I believe it was reported by fisheries to us. And uh, we sent officers down and what we came across was a, a situation where we had live and dead whales. Uh, they are short fin pilot whales which are a species that are known to strand on mass. So at the moment we've got officers and volunteers um, down there and they're stabilising the whales. Uh, so of course for us the biggest concern is them being out of the water and sunburned. So we've got uh, them covered and we're trying to keep them as moist as we can. And the plan is uh, to get excavated down there and move the live ones uh, to an area closer to where we are here, to the boat ramp, and hopefully refloat them and send them back out as, as a group. So the whales in Australia are now washing up on the beaches. They're dying. Wow. All, all in the same week, dust storms in Greece. We've got storms on every coast of our nation. Uh, the earthquakes. Have, have you seen Brother Si shot us an earthquake uh, over off the coast of Australia? All of the fault lines right now off of Australia, friends, are quaking everywhere. The, the the earthquakes are just unbelievable. I'm telling you, man. Earthquakes in various places. Earthquakes in various places. Now, I know that we've been seeing these things a lot. I'm building you up to the information that we have on the latest of this ambious, <laughs> um, uh, ambious bill signing that threw everybody into a tizzy that supported Trump. Mm -hmm. I'm building to this. I'm building to this. <laughs> I'm building to this. Trust me. Uh so not only are we seeing earth changes, not only are we seeing weather changes, not only are we seeing animal changes, friends, we are seeing the Dow plummet this week. And I'm going to share this information with you. And then when we start talking about what Trump's doing, we're going to explain to you why. Afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the lead. We're going to start with breaking news. Trade war fears rattling Wall Street today. The Dow is closing down more than 700 points right now after President Trump announced new tariffs on China, the makings of the worst day for the market since the turmoil of early February. Let's get right to CNN's Christina Alashi. And Christina, what are you hearing from investors? It's fear, Jake, pure fear that uh, the administration has unleashed the mother of all trade wars, announcing tariffs 
on $50 billion of goods with China. This, of course, is sparking fear of retaliation from China, which holds a large portion of U.S. debt. So we're just talking about fear at this point. And just to put this into context, if you look at the CNN Money Fear and Greed Index, it has dropped to extreme fear at this point, and investors are worried more about this trade war than rising interest rates at this point. Now, that's a CNN clip. <laughs> and notice they kept saying, fear, 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 fear. We do not fear. God does not give us a spirit of fear. <laughs> the devil is the one right. that gives you a spirit of fear. Let's continue. So this is the this is the focus, and the administration is going to be out there trying to settle the nerves out there, but all of this is based on perception, not reality. The market does not care about reality. It is sheer nervousness right now, and it might stick around for some time. It's not helped by the fact that uh, the president's top lawyer quit today. Also, uh, a lot of you know uncertainty over the White House. So, okay, so there you have it, friends. That that uh, fear, fear. They try to instill fear. You know, oh, the economy is crashing. The sky's oh, falling. Yeah, the sky's <laughs> falling. Blah 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 blah. On and on and on it goes. Fear is a very strong motivator, and they know that. Right. That the devil uses that. Right. So you know, friends, do not listen. Do not listen to that. Um, Chuck, what do you, what do you think about that? Just what I was saying. You know, just. It, we have to consider the source, especially being, thank you, <laughs> especially uh, I have a tendency to drift away from the mic. Um, you know, CNN has has been known to, you know, lie and stretch the truth and, you know, like you said, fear monger. Right. You know, that's how they get people to tune in a lot because most of what they say is just absolute baloney. So um, really fake news. <laughs> I had to say it. Um but, you know, it's it's interesting because, like you said, they really the fear is the only thing they have to go by because mm -hmm. they've pretty much lost most of their credibility. Well, by, who is leading them? You know, who yeah. do they serve? Right. That's yeah. what people need to remember, too. Yeah. And I need to remember that, too. You know, it's it's interesting because when you don't align yourself with the truth, you automatically align yourself with a lie because something's either true or it's a lie. Mm -hmm. There is no in between. So, you know, the devil likes to blur the lines. Because it helps you not to be able to see what the truth is, mm -hmm. whether it's right or wrong, and um, and it, it's interesting because you know a lot of the people behind the scenes, like we're talking about the Illuminati, you know, the people who are kind of controlling the, you know, they got the strings going, you know, they're, they're puppeting everything, and even people who don't realize what's going on, what they're doing, I've heard the term "useful idiots." They say that <laughs> yeah. you know it's it's like. And I, I don't mean to be callous against the people who are just deceived and just don't know. You know, people need God, so they need to know what the truth is. But whether some people, whether they're directly in league with them or they're not directly in league with them, but they're being used by them, you know, the, the same stuff happens. So, you know, I just it's just amazing to watch things. I always say that, you know, it's so amazing to see all this stuff just going and like you said, snowballing and get more and more intense. And God is in the details. We said so if you're paying attention to what's going on, you can kind of connect the dots. But if you're not, you know, a lot of stuff may sound just crazy. You know, they may just like, mm -hmm. you know, it's conspiracy theory, da, da, da. It's interesting how the truth is conspiracy theory now. Exactly. <laughs> you know, like, everything is upside down. That's yeah. what the devil turns things upside down. He's the author of confusion, and he's opposite of God. So if it's not of God, it's, if it's opposite of God, we know it's the devil. Just like with abortion, you know, God is all about life. That's right. And Satan is all about killing, mm -hmm. okay? God is all about a man and a woman being married, and the devil's opposite. He, he wants the homosexuality and all that. Uh, the author of lies, the devil, is backwards and upside down that's right. from God. And that's why in the last days we're told that good will be evil and evil will be good. Now, before we go to break, uh, we have some prayer requests Brother Chuck, uh, mm -hmm. we have uh, Miss Wendy Burns is still suffering from cancer. She's uh, mm -hmm. our brother Rick's niece, and uh, Sister Cheryl asked if we would remember her in the prayer list because mm -hmm. uh, she uh, she just, uh, you know, she needs our prayers because, mm -hmm. you know, she's still battling her disease. So prayers for Wendy Burns, friends. We need to keep her in prayers. And uh, Sister Sherry shot me a uh, a layout of how to pronounce that. It's Omni 
bus bill. <laughs> Such an odd name for yeah. what it is. Well, when we get back, we're going to describe exactly what the omnibus bill uh, <laughs> pertains to. So I know about that because of the omnibus, you know, yeah, that um, they used to have, you know. Omnibus, yeah. I think they used to have that. Uh, they might still have it. But I, I I, I practice, <laughs> omnibus, <laughs> omnibus. All right. <laughs> so, all right, friends, we're going to ease over here and uh, take a break. And when we come back, we're going to jump into what uh, Trump's bill that he signed and what this really means. And we're going to tell you some information that we've got fresh off the press, friends, and it's starting to make sense. Don't miss it. It understands why they're (laughs) running into their caves. It understands what God said, that the wicked's days are numbered. Yep. And uh, there is a judgment coming, friends. We need to stay still and listen to the voice of God, Mm -hmm. friends, because he's speaking to us all around. And the weather and the whale's dying the earthquakes and everything he's letting us know something spiritual is coming and it is yep i'm telling you friends it is so friends don't go anywhere and you know what since we were talking about the ways of the devil we'll share paul harvey's if i were the devil that he uh, spoke in 1965 and see if it pertains to today was he prophesied talk to smokehouse <laughs> dial 641-552-9354 that number once again, 641-552-9354. And enter access code 252-380, followed by the pound sign. Call in and join the show. Smokehousestudios.net God is among us. The door to the ark is slamming shut. If I were the devil, if I were the devil, if I were the prince of darkness, I'd want to engulf the whole world in darkness, and I'd have a third of its real estate and four-fifths of its population, but I wouldn't be happy until I had seized the ripest apple on the tree, the. So I'd set about, however necessary, to take over the United States. I'd subvert the churches first. I'd begin with a campaign of whispers. With the wisdom of a serpent, I would whisper to you as I whispered to Eve. Do as you please. To the young, I would whisper that the Bible is a myth. I would convince them that man created God instead of the other way around. I would confide that what's bad is good and what's good is square. And the old, I would teach to pray after me, our Father, which art in Washington, And then I'd get organized. I'd educate authors in how to make lurid literature exciting so that anything else would appear dull and uninteresting. I'd threaten TV with dirtier movies and vice versa. I'd peddle narcotics to whom I could. I'd sell alcohol to ladies and gentlemen of distinction. I'd tranquilize the rest with pills. If I were the devil, I'd soon have families at war with themselves, churches at war with themselves, and nations at war with themselves until each in its turn was consumed. And with promises of higher ratings, I'd have mesmerizing media fanning the flames. If I were the devil, I would encourage schools to refine young intellects, but neglect to discipline emotions, just let those run wild. Until before you knew it, you'd have to have drug-sniffing dogs and metal detectors at every schoolhouse door. Within a decade, I'd have prisons overflowing, I'd have judges promoting pornography, Soon I could evict God from the courthouse, then from the schoolhouse, and then from the houses of Congress. And in his own churches, I would substitute psychology for religion and deify science. I would lure priests and pastors into misusing boys and girls and church money. If I were the devil, I'd make the symbol of Easter an egg and the symbol of Christmas a bottle. If I were the devil, I'd take from those who have and give to those who wanted until I had killed the incentive of the ambitious. And what'll you bet? I couldn't get whole states to promote gambling as the way to get rich. I would caution against extremes in hard work, in patriotism, in moral conduct. I would convince the young that marriage is old-fashioned, that swinging is more fun, that what you see on TV is the way to be. And thus I could undress you in public And I could lure you into bed with diseases for which there is no cure. 
In other words, if I were the devil, I'd just keep right on doing what he's doing. Paul Harvey. Good day. 1965, Chuck. Hit the nail on the head. Was he prophesying? <laughs> I think so. If he was alive today, buddy, I bet you... Uh, mm. You know, that, those kind of things weren't going on really in 1965. Yeah, a, lo- not, a lot of like they are now. No, no, not at all. So, okay. The Omnibus Bill. It is not a law. It's not a uh, actual spending bill. It's a what if. Okay, I'm, I'm breaking it down in layman's terms. It is a... It, it, it's it's more of just a uh, uh, an idea. I'm gonna I'm gonna lay these ideas out on spending, okay? And this is where I think the money needs to go, and then they all pass it. But it's at the discretion of Trump whether he spends it on that or not, and he can pretty much spend it on anywhere he wants. Mm. So the omnibus bill. It was nothing more than just a bill of suggestions on what they can do with their money. Now, with that being said, let me remind you back when Obama was in office, and they never would pass a budget, but they would just pass omnibus bills. That is how Obama got away with sending all of this money over into Iran, uh, filtering money over to the terrorists, because. The allocation for this money had passed in Congress, but it was up to the discretion of of the president on what to do with it. It's kind of like a blank check, right? It's a blank check. Exactly. Now, it only lasts for six months, or at least this omnibus bill lasts for six months. And so when, like I said in the opening, you know, Trump comes out. Now, like you said, all the talking heads on Fox News were like, man, can you believe this? Mm-hmm. I mean, n- there, there's hardly chump change for the wall. There is, we're still funding Planned Parenthood. We're still funding all these other things. And, and here we are, 20 plus trillion in debt. And this omnibus bill is a $1.3 trillion spending spree, a blank check. Okay. And Trump comes out. Acting like a whip pup, saying, "This is the worst thing in the world." I, I can't, I can't imagine why I would even, uh, why I'd even sign something like this. I, I would never sign something like this, but I've got to sign, I've got to sign it because in it, it's money allocated for the military as well, and we need to start building up our military. So right then, Chuck, I was thinking, okay, you know, we've been talking about on past shows how Russia's building up. How China's building up. It's looking like we're going to war. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking, okay, well, maybe he is. Maybe he's building up the military because that's what it's all about. We are fixing to go to war. And then I'm like, okay, well, if that's the case, well, then none of these other things are going to (laughs) matter. You know, if if the nukes start falling, we start getting invaded. If we have a red dawn, you know. And people were saying, you know. Like, you know, the defenders of it would be like, well, basically, you know, this is kind of impossible to get these other things we really want. So we're kind of doing this, trying to get some of the things we want. So it's like the, you know, the typical compromise they were saying, you know. So, but like you were saying, there's so much compromise that didn't really make any sense. That's, I think that's kind of why in the back of my mind I was thinking, there's got to be something more to this. Right. And I, I was thinking that, too. But then at the same time, I mean, Trump was totally out of character, man. And and I was like, where is he going with this? <laughs> you know, last couple of shows, uh, what he's been saying about the Second Amendment, take guns and then have due process later. I mean, in the last couple of weeks, I have been on this show telling my listeners, friends, something has changed, man. Mm-hmm. You know, this is not the Trump that we elected. Has he turned into a Saul? Mm-hmm. Have we looked at Trump as a savior, and has he turned into a Saul? And It sure seemed that way. It did, and I was speaking out against it. I mean, I'm sure I lost a lot of listening base last program because I was like, man, I'm I'm worried. 
<laughs> you know, I, I'm see, I'm going on what I can physically see. Okay. Well, anyway, so when Trump comes out and 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 acts like a bumbling idiot, <laughs> and then for him to go ahead and sign this bill. And then the Democrats afterwards throw their big shindigs and their parties and they're drinking their champagnes and whatever it else is that Leviathan does in the dark. <laughs> that would probably make a billy goat puke. They were doing. <laughs> and so now I'm thinking, something ain't right. Has he swapped sides? And, and you said it yourself about yeah. all the Trump supporters, man. They were fit to be tied. Oh, yeah. They were like... Basically throwing, you know, verbally throwing everything at him, but the kitchen sink, well, that came too. You know what I mean? They were really, really going off. And I, like like you were saying, you know, I was the same way. I'm like, man, I, all I could say was very disappointing. <laughs> very yeah. disappointed because, you know, I I just, you know, heard, you know, some of what was in the bill and the big, huge stack, you know. Yeah, the, and Laura Ingram had it on her desk. Yeah, and I think that was just like what, like, 10% of it of yeah. the bill and it was like a big stack like a two foot tall stack of papers but um you know I was just I was just like man I can't believe this this is like not only just bad but it's like insanely bad like how could he be so you know how could he agree to something so horribly bad you know like when he was talking about how America's constantly taken getting taken advantage of by other countries I'm thinking, man, we just got raked over the coals by the Democrats. Yeah. You know what I mean? By and, the and things Trump, they want, right? And Trump went right along with it. Yeah. And that's what I was thinking as well. And then when he came out and said, he said, I know I know, none of y'all have read this. It's 2,000-something pages. Y'all haven't read this. I know you haven't. But I'm going to go ahead and <laughs> sign it anyway. And I'm like, dude, you're a businessman. How could you do that? I'm not even I'm not even a businessman, but I'm not going to sign some contract without knowing what's in it. And, and then Trump is just like, look, we we got to fund the military. Um, we 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 uh, look at Sister Cheryl. Oh, ye with little faith. <laughs> 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 Bless her heart. <laughs> That's what we say in the South. Bless her heart. That's right. <laughs> well, it's easy to feel that way when you look at even just some of the stuff that was in the bill. You're going, man, especially the whole Planned Parenthood thing. I'm ex obviously extremely anti-Planned Parenthood supporter. <laughs> Just, exactly. You know, for what, you know, most people know what they're all about, and especially with all those um, undercover videos that came out about them, you know, joking about selling body parts yeah and you know and just knowing people who know about what planned parenthood is all about not what they say they're about but what they're actually about the abortion industry the killing industry you know that's really you know anybody who is a has a strong faith and is you know any kind of you know my brain has just lost it for some reason. Well, I know what you're saying. The whole point is... <laughs> so much is going through my mind. <laughs> is that with, with, with all the corruption information, everything that we're finding out now that's been done in the darkness coming out, it's even coming out on the mainstream media. CNN yeah. may not be talking about it, but Fox News is, Sean Hannity is, Judge Janine is, and G Greg Gutfeld is. So it's out there, and with all of this corruption being exposed, Trump's still going to say, well, nobody's read the bill, but it don't matter. I'm going to sign it anyway. So yeah, what does that sound like? Yeah. And it's like. <laughs> like the health care bill? Yeah, like the health care. We yeah. got to pass it to find out right. what's in it, you know? Okay. So, <laughs> so yeah. 2,000 pages of, of, of this om, omnibus bill, okay, that, that, that is a, just a, it's just a bill of suggestions that the money can be allocated for, for whatever they choose, whatever Trump chooses to do. Now. Then I got sent some information this afternoon from Sister Cheryl. And let me share a few things with you, Chuck. <laughs> I need your help, Chuck. <laughs> Page 546. Four necessary expenses of the IG, $39.1 million. Page 556. Another $65 million, the IG. Page 565, another $4.8 million for the OIG. <laughs> Page 571, $5 million for the OIG, not to exceed $25 million. <laughs> Page 573, $14.7 million for the OIG. Grease in the skids. Page 578, 
$19.9 million for the OIG. In page 581, $245 million for the OIG. And he closes by saying, Sessions has a bankroll coming. <laughs> so this omnibus bill that Trump has signed that is just a suggestion. He can do with the money whatever he wants. <laughs> all Now, I don't have a calculator. I didn't sit here and calculate the, the total of all of this, but it's a lot of money. What's old Ron, Ron Why say? Sessions is going to be loaded. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> so why is Sessions and his crew being, being loaded with all of this money? It refers back to Psalms 37, where God says, or David says, the word of God, the days of the blameless are known to the Lord, and their inheritance will endure forever. But the wicked will perish. The Lord's enemies will be like the beauty of the fields. They will vanish, vanish like smoke. The wicked borrow and do not repay. Friends, the, it says to refrain from anger and turn from wrath. Do not be angry and do not exhibit wrath. Now that the information is coming out of what is this money is actually being allocated for. He says that for evil men will be cut off, but those who hope in the Lord will inherit the land. <laughs> a little while. Listen, friends, a little while. And the wicked will be no more. Though you look for them, they will not be found. Get Mo come to mind. <laughs> They will not be found, but the meek will inherit the land and enjoy great peace. Yep. Now, I know I've been hard on Trump the last couple of shows, but Chuck, you know, I have a responsibility here. You know, I've, I've got to, when I see something, I've got to tell the people I'm a watchman. Okay. Well, see, and that's how people can know that somebody's telling the truth. And I always respect people who are talking about, it, you know, Trey Gowdy, you know, all these different um, patriots in our government. You know, they're not afraid to call out their team mm -hmm. if they think that they're doing something wrong. Mm -hmm. And that, to me, it's not that you're turning your back on Trump by not 100 percent endorsing everything he does, especially when things are, you know, look very much like he's doing the wrong thing. You're going to call it out. Mm -hmm. You know, that's that's our responsibility to do that. Like you said, as watchmen is to point out what we see that's wrong or what really appears, you know, to be wrong is at least questioning it and going, hmm, this doesn't look good. So, and I I think I appreciate also with the show that you're never really telling people what to believe. You're always saying, hmm, you know, we've always been to challenge people to think about, you know, what's going on and to kind of question it and look into it um, as much as you can. I know most, you know, myself, I work like six days a week and then I come home and work. I do my best to stay on top of the news, you know, at least the, uh, you know, the main articles, the main um, there's my brain again. Um, IEDD is wonderful. Um, you know, it just, I, I try to do my best to stay on top of stuff. And that's why I like, think with the show too, we really kind of try to bring the main stuff that's in the media kind of together onto one show. And I think that's what a lot of shows try to do. They try to just kind of hit on those, the main issues that are going on so that way you can kind of get it all in one spot or at least in a couple of different spots, kind of con condense what we know into the show. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, And Sister Sherry uh, uh, reminded me, we need to, the OIG stands for the Office of Inspector General. Mm -hmm. uh, so I uh, didn't want y'all to be confused. <laughs> I got so excited, I forgot to say. So they're like, they're like, what's OIG? What is it? <laughs> but listen, Sister, Sister Cheryl just sent us some uh, breaking information. Check this out, friends. Uh, apparently, this fella went and read a lot of the bill and listened to what is in the bill. He says, yeah, I went and read the fine print of the act, and it gives him the power to defund anything that money was allocated for if he declares it for de deficit control. Mm. The man is a genius. <laughs> he can return anything he doesn't spend to the Treasury as deficit control. Reduction. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. It, it goes on. It goes on. Uh, 
In their haste, they gave the president so many legal powers they never thought those powers could ever be used against them. Never has a funny way of happening often. And then it goes on to say that it's all the deadly sins like pride and greed without an ounce of discipline. They can't even stop themselves. And Trump throws a pie in his own face and their arrogance makes them believe that he could never be smarter than them. LOL. (laughs) You're right. He bats them and, and, and they take the bat every time or he baits them. I'm sorry. And he takes the bait every time. He goes on to say every single time. It's the James Bond moment when the evil villain can't just kill him. He has to brag first. All of his sins are what make him finally fail. And his skillful and fearful James Bond wins. But let me take you back up here to the first where it says, yeah, I went and I read the fine print of the act and it gives him the powers to defund anything hang on now to defund anything that money was allocated for if he declares it for the deficit control (laughs) (laughs) the man is a genius he can return anything he doesn't spend to the treasury as deficit reduction now okay now this brings us to the trade war with china If you're kind of unfamiliar with what's happening with the trade war, let me break it down in layman's terms here. All right. Layman's terms is China has dropped their, okay, okay, I think China's, uh, uh, I'm just going off random numbers here, but I think that their their income tax or their their tax exempt on on the businesses over there was 15%. Well, then Trump passes a tax cut here in America for Americans. And then China then drops their, their tax down to 0%. Because, see, what we're trying to do is get our businesses out of these foreign lands and bring them back over here. And then Trump puts the tariffs on the steel, or the, the yeah, the, the tariffs on the steel so that we can start using American steel again. All right. Now, with that being said, and uh, Sister Sherry, while you're uh, shoot me a text and tell me once again what the uh, red uh, castle is, because I want to talk about that too. Um, and, and and give me a little bit of information of what's going on with the red castle, so I can I can share it because I I've forgotten our conversation about that until now, and now my details are sketchy, so I want to tell it right. But anyway, uh, with that being said, we're in a trade war with China right now. And uh, the Dow has dropped and all that. But with this now being written into the fine print where Trump can defund anything that he wants if it is for deficit control, that would mean Planned Parenthood. That would mean the uh, Johnson Amendment. Mm -hmm. That would mean all he's got to do is just deem it deficit Mm -hmm. control. Mm Mm-hmm. But here's the whole enchilada right here, people. This bill has been passed by Congress. There is nothing the Democrats can do now. (laughs) It has passed. (laughs) And their their wicked hangover just gets worse and worse. (laughs) That's pretty, pretty, pretty crazy to look at this and. I I just trying to imagine what they must be going through their head. <laughs> like, oh. oh my gosh, how did he do this to us? We we're the ones to do this to him. How can he have gotten away with it? Like, beat him at their own game. Okay, well, Sister Sherry, when I was talking to her this afternoon, she was sharing with me um, some more details that I was unaware about because um, the uh, what you call it the uh, uh, the bill this. Omnibus bill. You could call it the O bill. The O bill. <laughs> the OB bill. Uh, this bill that has passed now, uh, with all this spending in it, Trump kept bringing up the military, bringing up the military, bringing up the military. It's important that we fund the military. And, and of course, I was like, okay, Trump. Yeah, I'm. Hey, I love the military. Give them all they want. If you're gonna That's put right. a, if you're gonna put a boot on the ground. In defense, you give that boot and that man everything that we got. Yep. 
And I'm, uh, yeah, so I, I'm for that. Let's do it. Okay. Well, Q today, uh, just a, well, not today, but a while back, I think it was the 18th. I don't have it in front of me, but I, he, he dropped something about the Red Castle. Okay. Mm. And Sister Sherry was telling me today about the Red Castle. And I'm like, what's, what's the Red Castle? The Red Castle is the Army Corps of Engineers symbol. The Red Castle is the Army Corps of Engineers. And they are now funded via this funding of this omnibus bill because for the military. They, they are part of the military. So now the Army Corps of Engineers now have access to all of this money that Trump, at his own discretion, can either give them or put it back into the Treasury. Mm -hmm. It's passed. <laughs> There's nothing Congress can do. It has passed. <laughs> <laughs> Trump is now in full control. Hey, Obama did it. He, right. he sent all that money over there to Iran and all that. Nobody batted an eye. Mm -hmm. Now it's Trump's turn. <laughs> I wish I had a dun dun dun. <laughs> but this Red Castle, friends, the Army Corps of Engineers, being funded via the military, hmm. has all the money now that Trump would be willing to give them to build the wall. The wall. <laughs> That's incredible. All in all, it's just a another brick in the wall. <laughs> you go. Big brick. <laughs> Friends, share this program with everybody that you can, especially the Trump supporters, because I was one of them yesterday that was fuming at them, uh, just fuming mad. Not what I was doing and I repent for it, is I was relying upon my own understanding mm -hmm. when God is still on the throne. And he has told us, he has told us in his word, especially in Psalms 37, that the days of the wicked are numbered, just be still and wait upon the Lord. Mm -hmm. Okay, is Trump Osiris? I don't know. But God is the one who puts kings and rulers in power. And God can use them, whether they are Christians or not. We, it's been proven through Cyrus. So God obviously has Trump on the throne for some reason, and Trump has just hit a home run, and the Democrats didn't even see it coming. They were celebrating last night. you got to remember, too, God cares about justice even more than we do. So when we're upset and we're freaking out, you know, when we see bad stuff happening and it seems like nothing's happening, you know, God is paying attention to all of that, and he is going to judge all of it. Yeah. So we don't need to fret and freak out that, oh, gosh, you know, this is not happening. Da, da, da. That's where the scripture talks about not leaning on your own understanding, but in all your ways, acknowledging God and he'll direct your paths. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I really think that that also helps with, like you were saying, you know, with Trump. You know, I, it's interesting because, you know, the Bible also talks about love believes the best. You know, because the best and the and when you put yourself out there, when you love, you're really putting like you're believing the best no matter what. And, you know, and there's if you look close enough, there's little crumbs that let you know, OK, you know, it kind of keeps you where you don't just completely give up. You're going, hmm, there's probably still something here. And even I, mean, I didn't really get a chance to look into it. I just heard little bits and pieces of the um, the bill and what the media was saying. But then I felt like God, like in the back of my mind, was saying, you know, kind of like saying, but, you know, there could be something else here. So I think it's always important, even though it's hard, because our natural tendency is to think of the worst and go, OK, yeah, I was right. Then to go, well, you know what, maybe, you know, this is what's going on, because you're like, that puts you in a situation. If you're not right, you're very disappointed. But if you think about it, that's kind of selfish, because it's better to think the best and be proven wrong than to think the worst and be proven wrong so if you kind of look at it from that way it actually makes more sense to believe the best outside the fact that we're called to believe the best right yeah exactly right and to add insult to injury let's let's pause for effect here 
I'm I'm pausing for effect. It's, it, you didn't lose your signal. Hang on. I gotta, Are you sure you didn't lose your train of thought? No. I, I want to pause for effect. I just don't want the listeners to think that they've they've lost the signal. Hold on. We we must pause for effect. Okay. Let me set the stage. When this all surfaces on what Trump has done, CNN cannot say anything. MSNBC cannot say anything. All of the liberal media outlets cannot say a word. Why? Because the Democrats wanted this to pass. <laughs> because the Democrats were pushing for it to be passed. Why? Because the Democrats were threatening to shut down the government if it didn't pass. <laughs> Why? Because Congress has now passed it. I'd love to be a fly on the wall. <laughs> Our democracy has fulfilled its destiny, and the Democrats got everything that they want. And there's not one thing that the mainstream media can say. How in the world are they going to be able to spin this one? <laughs> they will try. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. And, uh, yeah, Sister Sherry uh, even reminded me, and let's not forget the Rhino Republic who has list, who has list their seats. She's loving it. Trump wiped out both parties with one swift swoop of his pen. What did Obama say? He said, I got a phone. I got a pen. <laughs> well, Trump didn't need a phone. He just needed a pen. Okay. I don't, I don't want to get too excited here because God hates pride. All of this glory goes to God, friends. That's right. All of this glory goes to God. He is the one. He is the one who is laughing at them now. Yep. And... Uh, now the tables have turned. So, friends, this omnibus bill is not at all what we thought it was yesterday. Now, with that being said, yeah, sister or sister brother Sai had a had a good point. Uh, he said, "Have you ever played snooker?" <laughs> now I know what snooker is. I've never played it. I don't know what that is. <laughs> it's a it, it's it's a billiard um, type of game, but it's okay. on a bigger table, and there's a lot more balls. Hmm. Um, I don't know the rules of how to play it, but uh, anyway, it's pool, some kind of pool game, so it's got to be cool. <laughs> All right, good question, brother. Sai wants to know if something happens to Trump, who gets the power then? Well, I guess it would go to the vice president. Yep, because the bill is still passed. And then the vice president can do with the money what he wants. I, I would assume that would be what uh, what would happen. But, friends, with all of the assassination attempts that have failed against President Trump, with God putting Trump on the throne, God has his hand in it. I mean, I, yep. I'll be the first to say I relied upon my own understanding. And I thought maybe something had happened. But, but friends, with what has just surfaced these last couple of days, and there's going to be more that's going to come out. Yep. Okay. Um, let me, let, let, let me, let me, let me gather my thoughts here. Keep, <laughs> I need your help, Chuck. <laughs> Say something. Let me gather my thoughts because I'm going somewhere with this. Well, you know, I really think that it's important, like I was saying too, to believe the best kind of, kind of along that line. Um, you know, we, we have to look at all the things that Trump has done. You know, we start thinking it's almost like, you know, there's a big difference between God and Trump, obviously. But people who are doing the right thing, this kind of those same principles, you know, you you look at what God has done and you can kind of go, hmm, OK, I can, you know, believe in something like that. God could be doing something because he kind of has our best interests at heart. And I know when I really started following the whole um, presidential race with, you know, Trump and Hillary and stuff and or even before that, you know, when he was running against the Republicans, you know, Rep Republican candidates. um. I'm not heard of Trump, you know, because of the show, you know, The Apprentice and, you know, Trump Towers and, you know, and stuff. But I never really looked into him until he started considering running and then he started running. And, you know, and I started hearing the things he was saying and I'm going, you know, 
people can say, oh, well, you know, he's an actor. You know, he just puts on a good show. You know, he can say the things, you know, you want. You know, he's used to doing that. But when, you know, when you start paying attention to the details, the details will give somebody away no matter how good they are if you pay attention. And um, I think that's, too, why, you know, I think actors play, you know, certain parts that are kind of kind of who they are somewhat. You know, good actors can obviously pull it off really well, but if you pay attention, I can watch an actor too, and I can, it's kind of weird, I can also like kind of watch them and go, hmm, they didn't really hit that one on this and this, so they didn't really fully convince me that this is how they are. You know, I won't go off on too much of a rabbit trail, but right. with Trump, you know, you, his caring about people and speaking the truth and kind of being brash, you know, obviously, and kind of... You know the way he does it; it's his his just his personality, and that's that's the way he is. Um, but you know, when you really look at his heart and how he really cares about people, and how when he said when he toured around and he got to know everybody, you know, it really changed him as a person to really kind of get down in the dirt and talking to people and seeing how stuff was affecting their lives. And that kind of what sold me on Trump, even before he really started talking about the things he was running on his platforms. As I could really tell, he seemed like he really did care. Yeah. You know, as imperfect as he is, you know, I think somebody who's humble will show, you know, and he does have his obviously pride issues, but like I think all of us do, you know, to varying degrees. But it seems like he, in a lot of ways, he would truly, you know, that I saw he would kind of, that would kind of break through and come through. That's why I believe that he would do the things he did, especially when it wasn't popular. He gave up all this money. He gave up a lot of friends when he decided to run Republican, you know, and conservative and, or, I guess you can say conservative Republican, you know, a lot of the things that we believe in. Um, but I don't see somebody being that popular and having all this money, being willing to sacrifice all that money and all this influence and contacts with people, unless you really believe in something. It doesn't make any sense that you would, you know, sacrifice all that stuff unless you really believe it. So I think that, that when I started looking at the things that Trump's doing, and I don't 100% agree with all the stuff that he's said and done, but, you know, I don't think you'll do that with anybody. You're never going to agree with people 100 percent. But when I look at these things, how he's got us out of the TPP and the, you know, these different bill, these different programs that we really were bad for our country. I kind of fell back on that and said, you know what, there's there's got to be something else going on. I'm glad that we're finding out there is something else that's been going on. Oh, yeah, man. And I mean, uh, he, he, he caught us all by by surprise, even his supporters. And it's a it's a great and it's a wonderful thing now. There's probably going to be backlash from this, friends. Now, this is the important part that we need to know. We need to listen very close because this move, once it's figured out and found out what Trump has done, uh, they are. The deep state is going to be reaching for their Hail Mary. And what does the Lord tell us in Psalms 37? He says, turn from evil and do good, and then you will dwell in the land forever. For the Lord loves the just and will not forsake his faithful ones. They will be protected forever, but the offspring of the wicked will be cut off. The righteous will inherit the land and dwell in it forever. The mouth of the righteous man utters wisdom, and his tongue speaks what? Let me see, I lost my place here. His tongue speaks what is just. The law of his God is in his heart. His feet do not slip. The wicked lie in wait for the righteous. Now listen, listen very close, people. This is where it's going to turn. Once they find out they've been duped, it says that the wicked lie in wait for the righteous, seeking their very lives. But the Lord will not leave them in their power. Listen to me. Psalms 37, verse 32. The wicked lie in wait for their righteous, seeking their very lives, but the Lord will not leave them in their power, Hmm. or let them be condemned when brought to trial. Wait for the Lord and keep his ways. He will exalt you to inherit the land when the wicked are cut off. You will see it. He didn't say you might see it. Right. He said you will see it. Mm -hmm. I have seen a wicked, ruthless man. 
flourishing like a green tree in its native soil. But he soon passed away, was no more. Mm -hmm. So, friends, he goes on to say, and was no more, though I looked for him, he could not be found. Consider the blameless. Observe the upright. There is a future for the man of peace. Mm -hmm. But all sinners will be destroyed. The future of the wicked will be cut off. The salvation of the righteous comes from the Lord. He is their stronghold in the time of trouble. The Lord helps them and delivers them. He delivers them from the wicked and saves them because they take refuge in Him. So the message from God tonight is, friends, with the information that we have learned about this latest Trump deal, this omnibus bill, God has given us our word, be still and wait. As Sister Sherry was telling me, and we shared ideas, I will tell you this, and Brother Si can be vouching for this as well, and he's, on the, he's listening tonight. Um, I have said that when Q was saying, oh, you know, March the 11th, it begins, he's going to bring out the military, he's going to bring out the National Guard, I did not see <laughs> the evidence of that. I, I didn't see any convoys. The National Guard depots were not filling up. I wasn't buying it. But this week, running up 65 and 69 in Indiana, in Tennessee, Kentucky, I saw three different convoys going both directions. Brother Cy called me from uh, Highway 71, Interstate 71 in Kentucky, between Cincinnati and Louisville and had a volley. They took over the truck stop, you know, getting fuel and getting supplies and stuff. Wow. So, in my opinion, something is moving. Hmm. Something may may be happening. Okay. Well, you now, remember Trump's comment, oh, the calm before the storm. <laughs> remember that? Yeah. Yeah. You, you heard the way he said it, too. Yeah. Yeah. It was pretty intense. I was like, whoa. Yeah. <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> maybe there's something to that. Yeah. So, all right. With that being said, are the corrupt now starting to see a little justice? We know about the monopoly of Facebook and Google, the censoring that's been going on, yep. the censoring of conservative Christians, the censoring of all this. What if, okay, I'll just say that for, but listen to what's happening now with Facebook. Facebook under fire, the FTC opening an investigation into the Cambridge Analytica scandal. Facebook stock dropping even lower in the fallout. And this morning, Facebook executives are heading to Capitol Hill. ABC's chief business correspondent, Rebecca Jarvis, is here with more. Good morning, Rebecca. Good morning, Robin. That's right. With the stock price spiraling and many now questioning whether their information is truly safe on the social network, ABC News has learned that Facebook CEO Mark Zuckerberg plans to speak out in the next 24 hours with the hope of calming fears and rebuilding trust. This morning, pressure mounting on Facebook following the Cambridge Analytica privacy scandal. The company's stock plunging nearly 10% in just the last two days. The Federal Trade Commission now opening an investigation. The attorneys general in New York and Massachusetts say they plan to jointly investigate both companies. And later today, Facebook executives will face tough questions on Capitol Hill. How do we preserve the benefits of, of Facebook? while, while at, at the same time uh, trying to combat the, the, uh, the abuses. The controversy stemming from claims that Cambridge Analytica, a consulting firm with close ties to the Trump campaign, poured over the information of up to 50 million Facebook users, obtained from the social media site by a third party. The data including details like age, race, marital status, and interests based on likes, potentially valuable information that could be used to target and influence groups with political ads. Cambridge Analytica says it deleted the data as soon as it discovered it was improperly obtained. This, as newly released undercover video captured by Britain's Channel 4, reportedly shows an executive from Cambridge Analytica explaining how they could saturate the Internet. We just put information into the bloodstream, to the Internet, 
and then and then watch it grow. Give it a little push every now and again so it's unattributable, untrackable. Cambridge Analytica allegedly created and spread the term Crooked Hillary. We made creative, hundreds of different kinds of creative, and we put it online. The backlash on social media fears with thousands now using the hashtag delete Facebook, something some like 43 year old mother of one Lydia Marquez have actually done. I was not only jeopardizing my own privacy, but also privacy of, of my child, of my friends, of my family. Facebook putting out this statement. The entire company is outraged. We were deceived. We're committed to vigorously enforcing our policies to protect people's information and we'll take whatever steps are required to see that this happens. Uh-huh. Yeah, they were deceived, weren't they? The devil's a liar, <laughs> friends. And... Sister Sherry had a good point. She wants Zuckerberg to sit in front of Congress and write code right in front of him. <laughs> bet he can't do it. Yeah. I bet he can't do it. Well, you know, here's the thing, too. Even if you're deceived, you know, you're still responsible for paying attention. Oh, well, yeah. So, you know, a lot of the, uh, you hear a lot of the, especially Democrats, get up there and say, oh, I didn't know, or, you know, it was an accident. It was a bad decision. It's like, well, bad decision is still something you're responsible for. Whether or not you intended to do something bad or not, the, the the lack of good judgment, you know, puts you in a bad spot too. So that's the way I look at it with this whole Facebook thing. And, you know, I find it hard to believe that somebody that's that high up is not aware of what's going on. They have access to all, you know, most all the stuff that's going on. They can kind of see what's going on. So, yeah. Well, you know, you said it yourself. Uh, and, and what my mom likes to say is these people, they're, they're puffed up with the effervescence of their own verbosity. I mean, <laughs> you know, these people think they own the world. Yeah. Well, actually, they, they have owned the world for a long time, but now there is a reckoning coming. You know, the American spirit has awakened. That's right. God has now shaken many people like myself and you. Yeah. And, uh, you know, many of my other friends, they have been shaken as well. Now, their shaking may have been 20, 30 years ago, okay? But it was for such a time as this, mm -hmm. just like Noah, you yep. know? Everybody thinks faith is crazy until it starts raining. Signed, <laughs> Noah. Right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> uh, so the point being is that all of this is now starting to to surface. It's starting to come out. These companies, like Sister Cheryl said, you know, uh, this is protects our Fourth Amendment right. We need an Internet Bill of Rights. Yep. You know, so our rights cannot be taken away. And now these organizations are beginning, uh, I'll just say beginning, to, to be held accountable for their actions now. Mm -hmm. Um. God is, God is, he's still on the throne, man, and he is working miracles right now. Mm -hmm. Friends, do you not realize this, that, you know, what we thought was a tragedy yesterday is one of God's miracles that he is still performing. Yeah. And instead of us being proud and and going to work Monday and say, ha, 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 nanny, 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 I told you so, instead of taking that attitude, be still, as we were told in Psalms 37 now, and these people that are going to come after us and attack us, don't go in with a prideful manner. Do not go in with a jealous spirit. Do not go in in any of these forms, friends. Mm -hmm. You are standing on the grand stage now of delivering an example of Christ in your life. This glory goes to God. And when we approach people as we go on throughout our weeks, get rid of the prideful spirit and just say, look, we have had a whole nation of remnant praying for this administration. Mm -hmm. We have had a whole nation praying for our land to be healed. We have had a whole nation repent and turn from their wicked ways and show them that Second Chronicles 7, 14 has just played out mm -hmm. right before us. And all glory goes to God. That's right. He says, if we humble ourselves, seek his face, turn from our wicked ways, 
repent of our sins, that he will hear our prayer from heaven, he will forgive us of our sins, Mm -hmm. and he will heal our land. Mm -hmm. This is the only rebuttal that we should have from here on out. When anybody questions why this happened, if anybody questions anything, you say, look, here is the word of God. This is what God had promised. This is what we have been doing as a remnant. And this is what God is delivering. All glory to this goes to God. I think, too, you can also look at it like, you know, is your faith really in everything that Trump does, you know, and him always doing the right thing? Or is your faith that God will turn it around no matter what? If your faith is in God, then it doesn't matter what people are doing. And, you know, you have to remind yourself of that because it's really easy to slip into. It is. You know, oh, well, he's doing this right. And I like this. And I like this. And whoa, wait a second. I don't like this. And why is he doing this? And it's almost like your faith. You realize your faith has been placed in Trump or in him always doing the right thing. You're like, wait a second. The only person that always does something right is God. So if your faith is in God, when people do things, you know, or appear to do things that are not right, your faith isn't shaken and you don't just give up and get discouraged and frustrated, you know, but it, like you were saying, all of us have that happen to us. You know, we're all human. We have a tendency to believe what we see and not what we know that God has said he's going to do in the Bible. So and that's one of the reasons why it's so important to be around other believers, people who are strong, so you can kind of sharpen each other and keep each other because it's like a slow fade into that. Like the song says, it's a slow fade, you know, and that's why that's why we need to be in the Bible. We need to be praying. We need to be patient and we need to constantly be examining ourselves daily to make sure we're walking in the faith. So, Amen. Well, getting back to Trump being a modern day Cyrus, God puts kings and rulers on the throne. So if Trump is a modern day Cyrus, Ezra came to Cyrus needing volunteers to go back to the new land to help them rebuild the land. And Ezra told Cyrus, listen to the words of Jeremiah, or listen to the, to the, to the word of the Lord through the mouth of Jeremiah on what, his say, what he says about Cyrus. Hmm. And we find it in Jeremiah 29. And Jeremiah said that in... Israel's 70th year, the bondage will be broken. Hmm. They will be released from captivity out of Babylon. Babylon's captivity will be ended. Hmm. And then after the 70th year, God is going to bring judgment. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I don't mean, I don't want to mislead you. I don't want to add to or take away. I was wrong. <laughs> God is going to break the bondage of Babylon, and he's going to bring judgment against the kings and the rulers. Hmm. It's late. (laughs) And then after the 70th year, he is going to restore the riches back to the children of Israel that were taken by Nebuchadnezzar. Mm -hmm. If he is a Cyrus. Yeah. It's like Job. Yeah. Just like Job. Tenfold. Through all that suffering and then, yeah. Like you said, tenfold, all the thing was returned to him, and then some. That's right. So if Trump is a Cyrus, Israel's 70th year is going to be May the 14th of 2018, this year, hmm. just in a few months. And look at what Trump has just done this close to May. He has literally not only broken our bondage with this omnibus, Om, omnibus bill. <laughs> He's going to build the wall. Yep. He's going to defund whatever he wants to defund, and it's all legal because Congress passed it. The Democrats wanted it. And Sessions and the, the OIG has been given all this money now to go after the corrupt. Gitmo is going to be open now. God says that for a time, you know, Y'all hang tight because the wicked yep. will be found no more. Mm-hmm. And then Trump's executive order that he signed back in December that stated anybody busted in corruption, trafficking, any of this illegal activity is going to have every ounce of their assets seized, and it will then become property of the government. Mm. 
What if Trump gives all that money back to the American people somehow or pays off our debt? Mm -hmm. Which could easily be done. Because think about it. (laughs) Think about it. Trump didn't seem too concerned about this Dow dropped, and he's not too concerned about this trade war. Mm -hmm. He's got something up his sleeve. There's something in in his head. I don't know what it is, but... But look at the timing. Look at what was said about Cyrus. And look at how, how, how the, the pieces are lining up. Mm-hmm. Now, Chuck, I, I said all of that, went through Psalms 37. We now found out a little bit of the intricate. There's probably more to this omnibus bill now that we don't even know yet, <laughs> yeah. okay? Scraping the tip. Yeah, you think your mind's blown tonight. Wait till next weekend. I bet we're going to find out. All kind of things. But anyway, nonetheless, I want to wrap this all up. Friends, what God is doing in the spiritual, he allows it to manifest in the physical. Mm -hmm. And then the spiritual aspect of that comes. China has a space station that has gone awry. They've lost control of it, and it's been zooming through space, and it's making a crash course to the earth and they're expecting it to to crash to the earth here in the coming days not sure when not sure where the name of this space station people is called taigong 2 i think that's how you pronounce it taigong 2 but it is the translation in english I want you to pay attention to. And in this report, they tell you what the translation in English is. They call it by the English name. What God is doing in the spiritual, he allows to manifest in the physical, and then the spiritual aspect will come. And listen what is coming to the earth. A Chinese space station may come crashing down to Earth in a little over a week. Experts guessed earlier this year that the Tiangong-1 station would land sometime in mid-March. On March 15th, the European Space Agency estimated the station will re-enter Earth's atmosphere between March 30th and April 6th, give it take a day or two. The thing no one knows is where Tiangong-1 will go. The ESA said it will re-enter between 43 degrees north and 43 degrees south. That area includes countries like Spain, Greece, and France. The station is China's first space laboratory. It was launched in 2011 and visited twice by Chinese taikonauts before Beijing lost control of the station in 2016. Tiangan 1, which means heavenly palace, weighs around 8.5 metric tons and measures over 10 meters long. Most of it will likely burn up in Earth's atmosphere and put on quite a fiery show. For United News International, I'm Cambry Caldwell. Did you hear the, the way she worded that report? And I'm sorry, I apologize. I called it Taigong 2. It's, it's Taigong 1. Translated in English, Heavenly Palace. And she says, when it enters, it could be making a spectacular fire show. So, friends, in the physical, we're about to see the heavenly palace fall to earth and make a fiery, uh, a fiery scene. Mm. What is God doing in the spiritual? That is a question that you have got to ask for yourself, for your home, for your family. You have just seen the promises of God play out right before you. If you humble yourselves, turn from your wicked way, seek his face, repent of your sins, he will hear our prayer from heaven, he will heal us, or excuse me, he will forgive us of our sins, and he will heal our land. That's right. And we've seen it in a matter of days play out right before us. Mm -hmm. And the heavenly palace is crashing to the earth. (laughs) What say you, Chuck? Yeah, I think so. You know, I it's God always does what He does for a reason, and it's always a good reason. And if you're paying attention, even to the little things like what stuff's called, and you know when stuff happens, dates like we've been covering a lot of dates. Jeremiah and, says your name was was spoken before the heavens were even created. Yeah, and so you know when you if people really pay attention, 
you know, there's so much going on to pay attention to you. It's like, oh, well, there's something. Oh, there's something. There's something. But when you really start paying attention and you really have, um, man, I keep getting away from the mic. Yeah. <laughs> so you're going to have a heck of a time editing this, I know. Um, but, you know, I'm just excited to know that we serve a God who is very involved with our lives and he loves us so much. And I'm just excited to see what happens. <laughs> Amen. Well, friends, let's bow our heads in prayer. Let's give praise to God for the gifts that have been given. Yep. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you at this time, and, and we all repent. We, we all repent of, of our, our, our wicked ways, our relying upon our own understanding instead of trusting in you. I'm guilty mm-hmm. of it, and a lot of us have been, Father. We, we're in a hard way to go here. But we, we know by example, we know by your word in the Bible. You told us your word will not return void, and it has not. And, Father, we, we see the signs that are around us. We still see the signs of judgment rattling on our, on our shores. We're trying to alert the people that, that judgment is coming. It's coming for all of us. Yep. But you're, you're, showing, you're, you're showing yourself. And we ask that you open our eyes, our hearts, and our minds to see it and receive it. Mm-hmm. And, Father, we're seeing the signs that the heavenly palace is going to make a fiery crash into the earth, just like you are going to be doing. Mm-hmm. But we're going to see this in the physical first. We don't know the day or the hour when you're coming. We just know that you are. Mm-hmm. So, Father, we're so thankful for this gift that you have given us right now. And we pray that it is used in the right way. And we pray that the fiery darts of the devil that come against the, the righteous in this land be stopped. We pray that mm-hmm. every fiery dart being shown, being thrown, and being tossed at our administration, that you put up a hedge of protection that none will touch President Trump or his family. And I pray divine mm-hmm. protection over him. Yes. And, Father, I pray for divine protection over the nation of Israel, Mm -hmm. for Netanyahu, because the deep state, the wicked, are coming after him just like Mm -hmm. they're coming after Trump, trying to find any and everything they can do to get him out of power, which shows us you have that man in the throne for such a time as this. Protect him and his his family. Mm Mm-hmm. Protect the nation of Israel, Father. We stand and support the nation of Israel. Yes. We will not be silent when it comes to Israel. Father, Mm -hmm. we thank you for this opportunity for us to be humbled, to have the technology to speak this to the world. Mm -hmm. Your message is going to be going throughout the entire world. That's right. This is the vessel, Father. You have given all of us who are tuning in the keys to be the captain. So help us learn and understand what we have been taught tonight including myself, that we put away our pride, that we put away our jealousy, Mm -hmm. that we put on the cloak of humbleness Mm -hmm. when we go out into the world with these people that attack us viciously Mm -hmm. to use this opportunity of understanding to show to them that your word is true and you will deliver if if we would just obey your commands. Mm You're an awesome God. You, you, you prove it every day. But, Father, this, this, is, this is something that's going to shake the non-believers. Guide and guard us, Father. Forgive us of our sins. And we pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Brother Chuck, we got another one in the back pocket, brother. That's right. <laughs> it's been great, man. It's been a good show. Mm-hmm. Bennett's been with us tonight. We didn't uh, we didn't uh, acknowledge him, but hello, Bennett. How you doing, brother? Good. <laughs> <laughs> He's doing good. He's still awake. Amen. I've been having a heck of a time myself, trying to keep my thoughts together. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, friends, listen. This this information that we shared tonight on on the latest about this omnibus bill has just been breaking. It's just been busting as we have been getting it. So mm-hmm. take the Take the the information that you've learned tonight and share the show link with everybody, man. They need to know. All over social media, especially. A, amen. Social media, Twitter, send it everywhere. Mm-hmm. Um, I've been asked, uh, uh, 
for it to be on YouTube so people can share a YouTube link. And it it will be going on YouTube about an hour or two after this program ends. So I'll I'll get that YouTube link to all who want the YouTube link. But take the show link. Send it to everybody because, mm-hmm. man, powerful information. A lot of yep. things are Very happening. Very encouraging. So, Chuck, what's on the agenda for next week, old bud? Uh, personally? Yeah, personally. <laughs> it's like, man. I don't know what you're doing yeah. on the show next week. Um, yeah, just pro- hopefully good work like it's been, you know, at, at work. And I, I'm looking forward to having some rain days so I can do stuff at home. Um, that It's been really nice to have today off so I can hang out with my family. Um, also, just getting some sleep because usually <laughs> I have to wake up really early in the morning and go to work. So I'm looking forward to that, you know, doing our little family farm that I got there at the house. And, um, yeah, I'm just looking forward to seeing what God's going to do. You know, I'm already excited Amen. to see what he's doing. But, you know, each like each day, you know, his mercies are new every morning. Like his plans are so good that like when God gives you that focus, you know, you're just looking forward to what he's going to do the next day. So. I'm excited that good stuff's going to happen because I know he's got good plans for us. Amen. Well, same old, same old for me. <laughs> I've got uh, I've got things lined up for uh, us to do, but I tell you what, Lord willing, the creeks don't rise. I'll be back next week. Now, Chuck's more than welcome to come I'm back. I'm going to try. I'm going to try to do wants. my best. But, uh, <laughs> you know, just I'd camp out here if I could. I hear I'd you. be on here every day. <laughs> I hear you. Well, if you've learned any lesson tonight, there's two important facts that we need to know. First of all, God is on the throne, and God is the one in control. God is the one making the decisions. God is the one turning the rudder. Yep. And he's proven that if we obey his commandments, if we pray, if we humble ourselves, he will hear our prayer and humble, and, and he will heal our land. And the other valuable lesson that we learned tonight is Congress passed it. <laughs> and there's nothing they can do about it the people that don't like it they can't impeach a bill can they we'll have nope. to research well it make them like you said it'll make them look bad if they start ta- down talking it because they've yeah, already been so they excited it. It. <laughs> yeah they wanted it <laughs> here's it's great it's here, great here's what they're going they're going to go back on the 25th amendment they're going to say trump's crazy man he ain't spending this money like we wanted it passed we or need he to he added stuff and old maxine <laughs> wanted to be impeached four to five Impeach 45. Yeah, what's his name? Bill Clinton. Yeah, <laughs> he's not spending it like we wanted it. Impeach 45. Well, I don't think old 45 is going to be impeached, at least for right now. So, God bless you, friends. Thank you for joining us tonight. I hope you had a good time. I know I did. Yes. I learned a lot. Did you have a good time, Chuck? Yes, I did. All right, very good. I always have a good time here. You need to send that link, too. I know Bennett's been over there sending it and sharing it. Nah, he's really good with that. Yeah, he's yeah. beating me to the punch. He's a good, good job, guy. Bud. Man. So, all right, people. Hey, we love y'all. God bless right. you. Thank you for tuning in. I mean, seriously, thank you for taking time out of your Saturday evening. You're like the rest of us, man. You work hard. Yep. And even those that listen during the week, you mm-hmm. still have to take time out for this program and I'm I'm truly honored and 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 I'm humbled. I mean, I feel the same way. Yeah, I love y'all. <laughs> I really I didn't do. think I was going to get on radio. It was totally God thing. <laughs> exactly. <so. laughs> All right, friends, be cool. Until next time. I'm Old Smokehouse and I'm Chuck Bird. We'll catch you later. Bye-bye. Smokehouse. To talk to Smokehouse, dial 641-552-9354. That number once again, 641 641- Five five two nine three five four, and enter access code two five two three eight zero followed by the pound sign. Call in and join the show. Smokehousestudios dot net. God is among us. The door to the ark is slamming shut.